In terms of fireworks, there were no goals. There have never been any goals. Um, and, and that is really part of the, of the joy of the, of the time. I'm, I'm only saying that in looking back. Um, I, I was doing what I was doing was making fireworks purely because I was interested in doing that. My wife used to say jokingly that I used to eat them, sleep them, t even take them to bed with me. You see, she would say, what she really meant was I'd talk about fireworks in bed. <laughs> and, and basically, I'm, what I'm really saying is that, yes, it was something which ha always has and fascinates me, because it's a lot more complicated than people think it is. The chemistry is very interesting, but it's not straightforward. Uh, if you're making military pyrotechnics, it's easy, because most military pyrotechnics are in the engineering and how it's used and what it's used for, but the, but the composition of it is very simple. Two or three, four components. Fireworks are complicated. We have 30, 40 different chemicals. And, and the chemistry isn't exact because we're using materials which are natural products, which are not chemically pure. We, you know, we use gum resins, for instance, uh, from trees and things like that. So a bit of alchemy as well about making fireworks, you see. Um, I always said that the, 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 the comparison between chemistry and uh, in, in firework terms and cooking is that there are cooks and there are cordon bleu cooks and uh, there are fire makers also who are firework makers and cordon bleu firework makers. <laughs> the psychological effect uh, on the person who is watching does vary enormously between different people. Uh, it's almost it, it's almost religious in that sense of the word as well. You see, there is the kind of um, I, I mean, rather than speaking in religious terms, I'm happy to speak in psychological terms. Really, in that we don't all appreciate the same thing in the same way. People come to me and say, "I did enjoy your firework display," um, and there was this. And they start to describe it, you see, what it did. And I don't recognise it. And I'm sort of saying, what are they actually describing? You see? And 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 really it can be very difficult because you don't know how they see it and how, how we would see it in its raw state. And 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 this is this is interesting uh, in the people's perception of, of uh, what fireworks are. The very first firework that I saw would be for the coronation of the king during the mid-thirties. I was probably about five. I was born in 1931. So I would be about five. I don't remember the date of the coronation then. But I was taken to the highest point of the town where we lived, which was not far away, where the uh, firework display was taking place. And as a small boy, I was very impressed by this, um, this big display. And so in that sense, then, the, the thing was sparked in my imagination. Fortunately, nearby were two or three firework factories, all concentrated in the same town. Uh, uniquely as it happens. And and then, of course, the war came in 1939. So there weren't any fireworks for five years, you see. And so we started to make our own fireworks, my cousin and I. And what was interesting, really, and was the basis of my chemistry, was that we began to realise at a very early age that the kind of gun, the kind of firework you made, depended a lot on charcoal, and the right kind of charcoal from the right kind of wood, and so we spent a lot of time as schoolboys making 
gunpowder which burns rather than explodes with different sorts of charcoal that we'd made ourselves in treacle tins by burning the wood inside these tins. So I learned, even as a young teenager, far more about the quality of the what are the materials we used for making fireworks, not knowing how useful it would be to me one day. And of course the problem now is where do I buy it? It's well the quantity. Mm -hmm. So basically that was that was how I began. So it wasn't so much the first firework that I made. We were burning sort of things all the time. But we did become quite proficient in making very large rockets. We weren't interested in making bangers, we made rockets. So, and we made big rockets, bigger rockets than they sell in the shops today. <laughs> the sticks were five feet long, and uh, and so it, we were making rockets. What big. did your mother think? Well, <laughs> I think, I, I suppose really, they, they just, didn't take any notice really and and basically I spend a lot of my time sort of doing it these things in the shed in the garden and occasionally I'd retire to the kitchen and use the oven and <laughs> and and there is faint, you know I look when I look back I shudder uh, when I think about what I did on that occasion and how near we got to blowing the kitchen up, really. Because I'd made some pellets of a certain kind and they needed drying. And of course they weren't, a lot of our materials we make into pellets, um, we call them stars, you know, it's something that falls out in the air and burns, but they have to be held together in some way. So we have to use an adhesive to make pellets. And um, I made these pellets and they weren't drying quickly enough, so I thought I'd put them in the oven. Now, even worse, in those days, it was a gas oven. You know, not, a, not an electric oven, as it might have been today. But the point was, she came out and she said, I don't know what you've got in the oven, but it smells awful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, there was me saying, my God, I've forgotten, I put them in there. <laughs> You see that, that and that that is immaturity. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that you will do these things and you don't think through the consequences of what you're doing. And so I rushed in the kitchen. I thought I don't open the door. I've got to switch the lights off. Switch the gas off. So I switched the gas off. I didn't dare do a thing for a while, and then only gradually did I open the door just ajar. To sort of let that out of the oven, and I was lucky it didn't think that. <laughs>